Imagine discovering that an ancient poet described reality the way quantum physics does today, 800 years before anyone even knew atoms existed. His name was Rumi. He wasn't studying matter. He was studying meaning. And what he found may be the closest bridge between science and the divine. Rumi's verses were not theories or equations. They were revelations of perception, insights into how awareness and existence intertwine. Centuries later, quantum physicists would discover a parallel truth, that the act of observing the world changes the world itself. This isn't coincidence, it's resonance between two languages describing the same mystery. At the smallest scales, matter behaves like a dream, flickering between form and possibility. In the famous double-slit experiment, light acts as both particle and wave, collapsing into certainty only when observed. Physicists call this the observer effect. Awareness doesn't just record reality, it participates in it. Another phenomenon, entanglement, reveals that two particles once connected remain linked across vast distances. When one changes, the other responds instantly, as if distance doesn't exist. Einstein called it spooky action at a distance. Today, we call it quantum correlation. These findings blur the boundary between the observer and the observed. Science explores it through instruments, mystics through insight. And long before the word quantum was ever spoken, Rumi hinted at the same field, a reality woven from awareness, not just matter. Rumi once wrote, you are not a drop in the ocean, you are the entire ocean in a drop. Physicists call this the holographic principle, the idea that each part of the universe encodes the information of the whole. For Rumi, it was more than philosophy, it was recognition. He saw unity in multiplicity, one consciousness reflecting itself through countless forms. He also wrote, the wound is the place where the light enters you. To the mystic, the wound isn't pain, it's perception. Awareness enters through fracture. Like the collapse of a quantum wave, suffering forces the self into focus. It destroys illusion and reveals what's real. And again, he said, everything in the universe is within you. Ask all from yourself, non-locality in modern terms. Rumi understood that boundaries between self and cosmos are imaginary. The same consciousness that breathes through galaxies also breathes through you. He didn't speak in equations, he spoke in symbols, but the pattern the rhythm is the same. Rumi's poetry and quantum physics both whisper one truth. Awareness and existence are inseparable. If consciousness interacts with reality, then attention is the most powerful force we possess. Rumi knew this long before science could prove it. He wrote, what you seek is seeking you. Focus is not passive, it shapes the field you live in. When you focus on gratitude, clarity or peace, your internal frequencies change, and the world reflects that change back to you. Modern experiments confirm that intention influences measurable outcomes. Rumi called it love. Physicists call it observation. Try a simple experiment tonight. Before you sleep, imagine one clear event you wish to experience tomorrow. See it vividly. Feel it as if it's already real. Then release it completely. Don't force. Don't cling. Just observe. Over time, you'll notice subtle shifts. Awareness, once conscious, begins to sculpt reality. It's not magic. It's resonance between consciousness and creation. Rumi often used mirrors to describe the soul. He wrote, if you are irritated by every rub, how will your mirror be polished? To him, awareness was not just light, it was reflection. The world, he said, is a mirror of the observer. Whatever you hold inside, you see outside. Modern physics now says something strangely similar, that the observer and the observed are not separate, but entangled fields of information. Think of it this way, the particle reflects the question we ask of it. When we look with certainty, it collapses into one answer. 
when we look with openness, it remains infinite, and so does life. Rumi understood this centuries ago, not through experiments, but through direct experience of consciousness. When he wrote about polishing the mirror, he was describing the process of clearing perception, burning away the dust of judgment and fear, until awareness becomes transparent enough to reflect reality as it is. This is the hidden bridge between mysticism and science. Both are mirrors for the same light. One reflects it in equations, the other in poetry. And when both mirrors align, the reflection becomes whole. Rumi was not describing quantum equations. He was mapping consciousness, the hidden architecture of perception. His poetry was a mirror through which the unseen became visible. Eight centuries later, science is beginning to trace the same outlines. When poetry and physics meet, truth begins to echo. And perhaps what we call the universe is simply the divine observing itself. If this glimpse opened your eyes, drop it in the comments. Because awakening begins the moment you realize you were never just observing the universe. The universe has always been observing you.